I just want to say thank you to everyone who watches my YouTube channel. And if you don't think a Savannah Monitor will play tug of war, you're wrong. Because they will. And they're actually really good at it. There we go. So if you guys like my videos, oh, he's strong. Please go ahead and leave a like. That helps grow my channel. Also, please comment on my videos. I love interacting with you guys. Uh, it's a lot of fun and I get to answer questions and see that you guys care. Uh, and if you're not a member of the family, you can go ahead and subscribe. It's free. It helps me grow the channel even more. And I've listened to you guys and I do have a Patreon down below. Oh, the alligator death roll. So please go ahead and uh, like, comment, subscribe, bell icon. Hi guys. I thought I'd do this video to really, really explain how to tame down monitor lizards. And you know, I have a couple big lizards and a couple lizards that will get big. But particularly Simba, who is a Savannah monitor, and I will show you some of my interactions with Smog and Ventress for my black-throated monitors. I've seen a lot of, we'll call it old information, or kind of wrong information on how to tame down these lizards. Also people saying, hey, I don't want to tame down the lizards. I want them to be lizards. You, when these guys are so smart, you can tame them down. They will live a better life. You will live a better life with them, with your family. And it really expands on what these things can do. So I want to share the best way, the best way to tame down monitor lizards. And I'm gonna use Simba and Smog and Ventress for this example, only because Simba is in an enclosure that I cannot get into, and Smog and Ventress are in an enclosure I can get into. And I've seen some people say, oh, the best is when you can get in their enclosure. No, no, makes no difference. Don't, don't believe that. If, as long as you have a good enclosure, you can tame them down. Now, one thing I wanna say is I also see a lot of people talking about really holding the, the lizard and taming them down when they're babies. For larger lizards, Simba, you're spoiling the result already. For larger lizards, this doesn't really work that well, starting when they're babies, because when they hit maturity, especially if they're male, they're gonna get a flood of hormones, and they can become aggressive or they can become wild again, we'll say. And a lot of people get discouraged when that happens. In fact, I get messaged on Instagram all the time, hey, this guy was my buddy, and now he's starting to become nippy. Now he's getting some size. Yeah, his hormones, his testosterone is starting to flow and it, it kind of resets everything. That's okay because that's also showing that you can tame down a lizard that you get that's large that you don't start with as a baby. So one of the things is it's all about the interactions and this part is true. They remember a snapshot of an interaction. Can you stay just when we're doing the video? And then I know that I'm boring you right now and that's another thing. So they remember your interactions. So if all you're doing is opening and feeding them, they're gonna look at you as the feeder. If all you're doing is opening them and picking them up and trimming their nails or cleaning their vent or things like that, and it's traumatizing, that that's what they're gonna remember. You don't want that either. You want to interact with them to a way where they see you as no big deal. Now, that is not really done just by sitting here not doing anything. People will say, I'm just gonna stand by my lizard. I'm gonna let them lick me. I'm gonna put my hand here. Let them, you know, they're tongue flicking. They're curious. Yeah, that does mean they're curious and they're trying to figure it out. But this, this is not how you gain a bond with your lizard. You can sit here and talk to them and things like that. Hi Simba, how are you doing buddy? He's still, he's gonna get bored of that. They wanna know what's going on. Sometimes people see this more with bearded dragons, but if you st do things in front of your lizard's enclosure, you'll watch the lizard is watching you. They are trying to figure out what are you doing? They wanna show interest in what you're doing. If you go and you clean a lizard's tank or you're adding a new hammock to their tank to a bearded dragon, let's say you have one, they're watching you. When you stick something to the wall, they're looking at the wall and you put a hook there for the hammock and they look at that hook and they're like, what is that hook? What's this in my tank? That's that knowledge. That's that brain. So one of the best ways when you want to tame down your lizard is you do want to be by them. You don't need to be interacting with them like this. Simba's already tamed down. 
so he doesn't care I can pet him. He already loves me. He burrows his head underneath me and rubs his head against me all the time. But I'll show you the best way I did. I was reading by them. But you can do anything. Now, in this case, I'm going to sit in front of the enclosure. And when the lizard is first not safe, you would do this with the clear glass closed. But I would just sit here and I would read. And you don't sit here and do nothing. I wouldn't use my phone because it was too small, but I would read. But now look at Simba. He's instantly showing interest. Look, let me flip a page. So he would show interest with the door closed. Now he's not showing interest on me when he was smaller. He was showing interest on what I was doing. And especially if you're reading something colorful, I just grabbed this manga, so it's in black and white. But I would sit here, I'd hold this in my hand. I'd ruffle through pages you know, make noise with it. And the lizard would be like, what is that? See, here comes Simba. What, what, you flip the page? And then he's not showing interest or aggression towards me. Actually, we're bonding because we're showing interest towards the same thing. I'd say, yeah, Simba, look at this page. Oh, it's pretty cool. And then I'd flip over a couple more pages and he's like, what the heck? I'd be like, yeah, did you see that? And he would not hiss. He would want to show that thing. And then you can have him feel the air as it flips and hits their page. And again, that's getting their brain thinking. What is this? What are these colors? What's the scent I'm smelling? And I would bring different books. And and I would just ignore him. And I would just read. And then I would start to, he would start to show towards me, like right now. Hi. Yeah, I'm just reading. Because then he would want the attention. Because now I'm sitting here, I'm paying attention to this book. Do you see? Good boy. See how tame this guy is? He's like, can you give me attention? He knows if he if he acts like a good boy, I'll give him the attention that he wants. I'll take the attention away from this book and give some of the attention towards him, which is just what he wanted. He wanted some kisses. That's what he does. He knows to present his face, and I'll give him smooches. And that's how you tame them. You don't sit in the tank and put your arm in and do this and do nothing. You want to be doing something where you're not even looking at them. You always gotta keep them in your peripheral vision, especially if it's something that's wild and tame. But this, they're gonna be on this. And I don't see anyone talk about that. They're doing it wrong. They're like, I'll just sit here and I'll just do this and I'll slowly let them smell my arm. No, they can smell you already. They can smell you when you're when you first enter the room, even in a tank that's closed, all those scents in the air, they, they know what you smell like. In two seconds, they know what you smell like. One little tongue flick, they know what you smell like. They don't need to smell you. They don't need to lick your whole body to know what you smell like, right? They know your scent right away. So just, hmm. And so you bring something different with you. I bring a different book. The book now has a different scent. So then we're bonding together. Yeah, what the heck is this? He'll get close. Because he's not getting close to me, which maybe he's scared about. He wants to know about this. And then he's going to realize, oh, this is cool. And oh, I'm next to this person and, and I don't care. This person didn't do anything bad to me when I got next to them to figure this out. And then we're figuring it out together, right? Then I'll talk to him. Yes, yeah, Simba, look at Link. He's killing this monster. He's turning into a wolf here. This is the novelization of Twilight Princess. And, that, and that's how you do it. And that's still how you build that bond stronger and enrichment to this day, I still do it. Um, like I said, you can use a larger book, hardcover, colored books look really well. But yeah, Simba, what did you think about that? And for him, I'm gonna let him go off and do his own thing. This was such a positive interaction. Look, he's just gonna lay down right there. He's not doing anything. This was such a positive interaction that he's fine with me sitting here. That, that is what I don't see done. I don't see people talk about that. They don't do it the right way. They do this. He doesn't give a crap about that. But he showed interest in the book and he wanted to know why I was showing interest in the book and not going after him. Now, Smog and Ventress, I actually think a non-walk-in enclosure is a better way to bond because the animal is by de facto can't get as far away from you if they want or things like that. Um, and it forces that interaction a little bit more, but it's okay. But so here we have Smog and Ventress. They turned three last month. 
this might get a little interesting because Ventress is kind of leaning. You can see her over here against the glass. So when I open it, she might fall, she might readjust. But I'm gonna interact with them outside and inside and just show you exactly how it goes. And also, I'm gonna tell you guys, the reason why I like books, if you go to a secondhand bookstore, you buy a used book, there's a chance that this book's been sitting on the shelf in a store. It's been owned by another owner. There's a lot of sense going on in a used book, right? That's why they're so good. So I'm going to put the book down, though, for right now, because if you don't know, maybe sometimes you haven't seen my interaction with these guys. It's black-throated monitors. The largest lizard you can own outside of the Komodo dragon. I worry about Ventress. She might try to scamper away just because she might fall, but we'll see what happens. So right away, they're both curious. I'm just at the glass. I'm gonna kind of try to support her. There we go. She is falling into my hand. Don't know how I do that. Now look at Smog's head. It's turned, he's curious because I'm not petting him right away. I'm not even talking to him. I'm talking to you guys. I'm looking away. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Look at how tame these lizards are. They're not coming at me for food. They're not attacking me. This is from working with them. Not from working with them for years, guys. You can get this behavior in a month or two if you do it right the way I say it. I have people who give me their lizards. That way I can tame them down in a month or two. Now think about that. I'm taking an adult wild lizard not wild, but owned, but not by me, doesn't know me, and getting them to act like this. Hey, how are you guys doing? How you doing, big boy? He could, he could rip me to shreds. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. How many people can do that with their giant lizard? I'm not the only one. Let me tell you, not many. Hi. Hi, Ventress. I know you're kind of leaning on me. I was hoping you would back up. <laughs> that way I wouldn't have to keep holding you. And hi, Smog. How are you doing? Look at me petting them. Look at Smog. He's fine. He's readjusted. Again, he's smelling and he is curious. What am I doing here? I'm still doing these interactions to keep our bond strong. I'm going to let you go, okay, Ventress? I think you've kind of stabilized. Okay, good job. Now, I'm going to get my book. This is a walk-in enclosure, but still. I'm going to get my book and I'm just going to open it. Look at these colors. Let's look at Smog. He's looking right at the book. He's licking the book. Huh. Hmm. Well, look what's going on here. Oh, boy. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I don't really care about him at all. Oh, look at this. And Jean Grey. And she's probably going to die again for the millionth time. And flip some pages. And he's smelling the book. His tongue is hitting the book. I do know their tongue is going to hit these books. Try Don't do this with anything valuable. A collector's edition. You know, you might get some monitor saliva on it. Oh, yeah. And look at Smog. He's like, what is this thing? Mm-hmm. This is fascinating. Did you see what happened on that page? Now I'm going to talk to him. Did you see what happened on that page? Look at him looking at me. Yeah, that page down there. Look, I'm going to point at the book. Down here. Yeah, and he's looking at it now. Yeah, you saw that? See how we're bonding? He's ignoring me. He's looking at And look at Beast. That's probably his beast. I know. Oh, I think this is the good one, actually, with Sinister and, like, the woman he kidnapped and stuff back in the day. That's what I mean. Do you see all that? This is that type of interaction. Adventurous is looking from the distance. And look at this. The saber tooth, and he's walking around with a collar. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, I know. And then right there, Cyclops. Right, yeah. Now, look, now he wants attention from me. Right there, Cyclops. I know. That's what I was trying to tell you. This is that bonding. Flip a couple pages, get some good air in his face. Yes. And that, oh yeah, we're back at this page somehow, the shirtless Cyclops shooting. Yeah, interesting. I know. Now look, now he's starting to come to me because he wants to know, why am I not paying him attention? Look at this bonding. Why am I looking at this? He wants cuddles. He wants love. But I'm looking at this first. Oh, hi, buddy. Well, I'm trying to read my book. This is what gets them to bond with you and then to want affection over you you almost start a little bit of jealousy right that he's jealous of the book he wants to why am i looking at this book let me fan him 
Look at that type of interaction. I gotta tell you, there's no difference if I'm sitting here or sitting on my chair in there. It would be the same thing. Hi, I'm sorry, I was trying to read my book. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. I'm reading my book. Yeah, thank you, I'm reading my book. This is that bonding. Staying, staying, you know, in a neutral location, ignoring, doing something. It doesn't have to be reading a book. You could be doing a crossword. Like I said, I like the books. I like the paper. It makes the noise. It carries the sense. It can cause wind. But doing something else in their presence, that's what makes that strong bond, and it makes them want to interact with you. And then he's just going to remember, hey, Last time he was here, he was holding something, and him and I were both investigating it, and he gave me kisses, and he gave me love, and it felt really good, and I liked that, and then he left. That's 100% positive. You've seen it with Bearded Dragons. People bounce balls and stuff, and they, they look, and they follow the ball and things like that, and then they want to know. It's that computer. These lizards watch us. They watch us. They learn from us. I go, boy, look at him petting his neck. That's his vulnerable area. That's a good boy. He's not moving away if he wanted to get away. He's interested. I go back to the book. That, you have to be doing something in their presence, guys. I can't, I can't say it enough. It just too much old info of just stand by them and don't do anything and, you know, let them smell you. They've smelled you. You've, he, he's already smelled me 500 million times. You want to smell me again? He doesn't even want to smell. He's like, what the crap is this? I know. There's just small... It's not your fault. There's a lot of people who just really don't know how to tame monitor lizards down to be as close to a puppy dog as possible. And that's unfortunate. Right? Okay. Okay. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Hopefully I've answered questions. Uh, and you guys can uh, take what I've said and start implementing it with your monitors. But like I said, if you have a male monitor, once they start to get close to two years old, they hit sexual maturity, hormones come in, they'll get a little hissy, they'll get a little bossy. You just keep Keep going the course because eventually, typically in a month or two, those hormones level out and they can be trained and snap everything back to where they need to be. Smog used to hiss at me like crazy. You guys know that? He wanted to kill me. Simba wanted to kill me. They were my best friends when they were little and then they went crazy. And then they just mellowed right out with that technique. Look at your hand. Look at your hand. Look what I can do. I know. And guys, I've done this with Blackthroats, Savannas, probably the hardest, I'll be honest, the Nile Monitor. And whether they've been captive born and bred, just captive born, or even wild caught, it is still 100% doable. It doesn't matter the age. You just do this technique. If you guys have any questions or have had results in doing this, please leave a comment down below. I appreciate it. Hopefully, I've helped answer questions, all right? <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thank you guys for supporting my reptile rescue family.